Hello, welcome to Fun Friday. Well, we've been documenting uh, the banjo build, and um, so that's what we're doing today. And I was thinking about it the other day. My youngest uh, daughter just started at Oregon State University, and a while back she asked me, Dad, you know, you're an educated guy. What did you get on your SATs? And I told her, I said, Charlie, I'm a banjo player. I got drool on my SATs when I fell asleep. So anyhow, you heard the one about the hijackers that hijacked a, a plane load of banjo players on their way to a bluegrass convention. And they told the authorities if they didn't meet their demands, they were gonna start releasing banjo players. So, ha, ha, ha. Uh, in, in all honesty, science has shown us something interesting about the banjo. I talked last uh, time about the conspiracy that I'm a part of and to release banjo music to challenge the sanity of humanity and to crack the wall of ice around the flat earth. But um, we have also managed to prove that banjo playing, banjo music attracts Sasquatch. And, and it's, it's become quite obvious by the number of banjo players and people that like banjo music who see Bigfoot that clearly there's a connection. There's something about the, the pseudo-melodic tones of the banjo that attract Sasquatch. And that explains the, the higher number of Sasquatch sightings among that uh, subgroup of, of Americans. Now we've tried to test this in uh, the Himalayas to see if it has the same effect in attracting the Yeti. Uh, however, it became problematic because remember the banjo's piercing sound cracks ice and we were having so much trouble with avalanches that we were unable to attract the Yeti. So I wanted to take a minute and show you where I'm at on the banjo build. Uh, just as a side note, uh, if you like working in your garage on wood and you haven't thought of this, um, this is a box fan, just your ordinary box fan that you buy cheap at the store. This one was old and worn out. Well, not really worn out, but old and not really fit for the window or what have you. And I taped a... Um, 20 by 20 furnace filter over it and I turn it on high and while I'm sanding it sucks the sawdust into that and of course I have the window open when I'm doing that and that tends to help. I also always wear a respirator and things like that. So where I'm at on the build the first thing I'll show you is I made this walnut tailpiece. Now this just has grain sealer on it. It's not finished um, and, and that will go on the instrument here to hold the strings and I've made tail pieces in the past and and they work fine although I have had one fail and and crack and it of all things that happened to be made out of tiger wood hence the walnut um, it I had it strung up and it was a nylon six string and I'm playing and it sounded great and I played for a couple days and all of a sudden wham bam and it cracked and strings went everywhere so it was it didn't cause any harm but it, it uh, sure boiled my potatoes so um, where I'm at on this I have grain sealer on it um, you can see it, and I got some trim uh, that's not inlay it's it's a decal but when you get it uh, if you get it under your varnish, it, it really blends in and looks very much like inlay. In fact, a lot of people have thought that it was. Uh, I'm too lazy to do inlay. Well, I, I could. I've done bindings like this before. Um, I had mixed feelings about running a router in the tiger wood to put binding in because it doesn't always route that well. So I opted for this. And I've got the back on. It's only held on right now by two screws. Um, the the plan at this point. So you can see I've shaped everything, and I've I do have frets in, and they're taped. 
because I, I kind of wanted to do my fret job before I finished my sanding and all the work. And uh, so I, I did it that way. I don't recommend that you do it that way. I chose to. I, I'm quite happy with that. But uh, you'll see I did go with the red mahogany stain on the veneer. I think it goes well with the tiger wood. Um, and I, I'm happy with that choice. And uh, what I have left to do, I have a lot of things left to do. I have to drill a hole here to put the chanterelle tuner in. I have to drill holes in the headstock to put the four tuners in. Um, I will at some point mount the tailpiece. My plan for that though is to get the nut made and um, have strings lined up so I get the tailpiece in the perfect position. And so that's part of why it's not on yet. And the real focus of my time uh, th that's coming is uh, I'm going to need to sand this uh, flush. It's pretty close, but I want to sand it smooth and flush to uh, the sides and smooth and flush here. And uh, actually, before I do that, it's only held on by two screws. I'm going to put the screw pattern in all the way around and I have it fastened on while I work on it. And that way, if I hit this and I take off some grain sealer or scar scratch the grain sealer it, on, on the, this part, it won't matter because I'll, I'll re-finish it. I'm going to put lacquer on it uh, ultimately. But this needs a lot of work. I'll have to sand all of this smooth. I'll have to work around the Celtic cross and file and, and sand in all the nitty gritty places and try to make it uh, the way I want it to be. And we'll see how that goes. Sure hope it works. Uh, a lot of work going into this. However, here's what I do know. If for some reason the skin doesn't stay in or, or something like that, I could easily put a wooden top on this. Uh, I, I actually, I'll just hold on a minute. <clears throat> I actually have enough of this fence board that I used on the plectrum guitar. See the wormholes? That's a real pretty look on the front of an instrument. And I could put that on there if for some reason it doesn't hold the skin like I want it to. And I'm confident it will. And the reason I actually have saved those boards is I have another neck uh, that I made uh, and I'm changing it up. Uh, to become a three string with a chanterelle so it'll have four strings and um, a triangle body so it'll i'll call it a banjo -lica. so it'll look like a balalaika and play a little like a banjo it'll be a fun project and we'll see what happens with that <clears throat> so that's where i'm at i might mention to you i don't just labor and labor and labor over this you're seeing a video once a week um, I'm a busy enough guy, so it's a hobby, and like most hobbies, you just squeeze it into life. And, and so there are days I don't work on it, I don't look at it, I don't do anything with it. There are other days that <clears throat> I get to spend a little more time. A lot of times I get home from the office late, and uh, I might spend 10 or 15 minutes tinkering on something and then go shower and go to bed. Um, it, it's just here and there and sometimes I wake up in the wee hours of the morning at oh dark 30 and do stuff so it's kind of just like that it's supposed to be fun it's not a big project uh, and and my advice to anyone that decides to do any kind of build is make it fun take your time and relax so we'll see you next time the Lord bless you guys